over the past, let's say, 20 years, there has been quite a considerable development in the, in the way we see climate change. It obviously started mostly as an environmental issue. We have learned that it is much more, it is an economic issue to a large extent, it is a security issue, it is a health issue. And today I'm going to focus on climate change as a human rights issue. And why um, exactly it is a human rights issue? I think the easiest starting point would be to take the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and its various articles. But you could just as well do this with the European Convention of Human Rights or the International Covenant of Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, because uh, climate change really affects many of the basic features of human rights under various treaties. Now, if we use the Universal Declaration as a starting point, for instance, in the Article 25, we talk about the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of, of himself and of his family. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, issued its fifth assessment report just a couple of days ago, and in the second installment of that report, uh, the, the panel, the a number one scientific uh, body on climate change says that uh, climate change impacts are projected to slow down economic growth, make poverty reduction more difficult and prolong existing and create new poverty traps. In essence saying that basically if climate change continues unabated it is going to deprive many people of their basic right for a, a decent standard of living. And the same applies uh, to many other articles under the, the Declaration as well. For instance, Article 13 talks about the freedom of movement and the freedom for people to choose where they live. And again, the IPCC says that um, climate change is projected to increase the di displacement of people, so basically forcing people to flee their homes uh, because of the various impacts of climate change. Another example might be Article 15, which gives people the right to nationality. And again, that is something that people may not have in the future because of climate change. Um, the fifth assessment report talks um, of land inundation due to sea level rise, posing risks to the territorial integrity of small island states. I think that's a fancy way of saying that in the future, uh, there are many small island uh, developing states that will simply disappear from the face of the earth because of rising sea levels under the most uh, dramatic scenarios of climate change. And perhaps the most fundamental human right of all, the right to life, may also be uh, uh, at risk because of climate change. And uh, that is because of many reasons, but just to give you one example is that uh, climate change can increase risks of violent conflicts in the form of civil wars and uh, intergroup violence. So basically we may have uh, more wars and more um, serious wars because of climate change in the future. Now these are just a couple of examples taken from the Universal Declaration. Another way of looking at it would be to, to um, just to sum up what kind of changes climate change is likely to bring on uh, upon us in the future and I think uh, Christine Lagarde, the head of International Monetary Fund, has um, perhaps been the clearest about the potential impacts of climate change when she said that without concerted action the next generation will be roasted, toasted, fried and grilled. So basically if we fail at um, addressing climate change we are likely to have dramatic even catastrophic impacts that are likely to undermine pretty much all of the human rights as we know them under various treaties. And it's not only about climate change uh, affecting human rights, also the policies to address climate change have a human rights connection. And I think one uh, easy example would be uh, the biofuels we are using in our cars to reduce emissions. Uh, there are various reports and studies suggesting that increasing the use of biofuels in transport is actually leading to higher food prices. And higher food prices mean less chances for the poor to buy their food, uh, aggravating hunger. So even climate policies do have a strong human rights linkage. Now this uh, connection between human rights and climate change is being increasingly recognized uh, uh, in different international uh, uh, fora. 
the UN Human Rights Council uh, stated already in 2008 that climate change poses an, an immediate and far-reaching threat to people and communities around the world and has also implications for the full enjoyment of human rights. And this basic message has been repeated uh, several times by, by various organizations and institutions. Um, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I'm a politician, a policymaker, so I would perhaps try to give a couple of reasons why exactly it might make sense to talk of climate change as a human rights issue. The first one would be that, um, intriguingly enough, despite all the human rights abuses taking place across the planet, um, there seems to be a fairly widespread consensus on the importance of human rights, at, the, at least at the level of discourse. Even if you talk to the most brutal dictators, they are arguing that they actually are observing human rights. So I think the human rights consensus is something we can use to our advantage when we try to convince uh, the leaders of the world to take action on climate change. A second reason might be that human rights is uh, one way of reaching out to new constituencies. The organizations, the leaders, the institutions working on human rights, we need all of them on board also to, to address um, the threat of, of climate change. I think also climate policies as such have a lot to gain from the integration of human rights uh, concerns and, and, and considerations. Um, I think climate change policies um, can uh, benefit from uh, also looking at what kind of impacts they might have on, on human rights, starting from uh, what kind of targets we need to set on reducing emissions, ranging to the different actual policies on the ground to reduce emissions. And my fourth point would be that uh, potentially, just potentially, um, seeing climate change as a human rights issue might give us some new tools uh, through legal action to address uh, climate change. And I, and I know this is a fairly contentious statement, but there have been many attempts at, at trying to do just that. There have been uh, individuals and organizations representing vulnerable indigenous peoples um, taking their governments to court, saying that uh, inaction on climate change is endangering their livelihoods and lives. There have been small island states uh, using international legal means to um, get uh, some uh, action on climate change. At the national level, there are also various examples, um, especially in the United States, but also in the Netherlands, a foundation uh, taking the Dutch state to the court, arguing that the Dutch state is neglecting its responsibility to tackle climate change, uh, which obviously means a number of, of really detrimental impacts on, on the people. Um, however, despite all these attempts, there isn't really much uh, to report back on. Um, and this is also stated in the UN High Commissioner's uh, report, um, while climate change has obvious implications for the enjoyment of human rights, it is less obvious whether and to what extent such effects can be qualified as human rights violations in a strict legal sense, which is the point made by uh, uh, earlier speakers uh, asking the question, a fairly relevant question, whether everything should be dealt with in the courts, whether there might be some other means of, of actually addressing climate change outside the courts. Uh, so basically, it seems that we do not have the institutions and, and tools to address climate change uh, as it stands. And Mary Robinson has come to a similar conclusion when she argued that climate change shows up countless weaknesses in our current institutional architecture, including its human rights mechanisms. So we have this gigantic, enormous threat on the well-being and the future of our societies and individuals that is clearly going to undermine human rights at every single step of the way. And yet we lack the institutional tools and measures to actually tackle that uh, uh, gigantic threat through the human rights mechanisms we have at hand. So this brings me to my three conclusions. First of all, um, I think it's fairly established that climate change is also at its core 
uh, a human rights issue. Secondly, I would argue that framing climate as a human rights issue can benefit climate action and it can be useful. And thirdly, and I think this is probably more contentious, I think we do need some type of institutional reform to be able to adequately address the threat climate change poses on human rights. And, and we clearly do not have the institutional framework uh, ready for that at this stage. Thank you. <clears throat>